Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to be talking about one of the most important art fundamentals, which is very often overlooked. The main topic is going to be contrast, and contrast can mean so mm. many different things. When I started out, I assumed contrast was just uh, an adjustment layer in Photoshop, <laughs> where you just make something, now something is brighter and something is darker. But contrast is really like one of the most useful tools when it comes to designing anything, if it's, whether it's graphical design, it's texturing, modeling, it's doing an environment, composition. Mm. This is one of the real core skills which will just improve your art, whatever it is you're doing. One of my favorite examples of contrast was a, it was a design teacher. A lot of this stuff that we're showing here is actually stuff that we talked to him about that mm. he taught us. One of his examples was stage design, I remember, mm. which is really cool like for theater and having contrast I'd, I'd never thought about that because no. that's that's contrast in a physical space but with shapes mm. like you have contrast with shapes and it's so apparent in some stage designs where you have different sizes of boxes or the house over here is small because like you have to work within your little limited mm. space and you have to cheat in a, in a way you know maybe you make a, a window or a door smaller than it would be in order to get contrast there that was a really interesting example to me. Yeah, but it's it, because it's different, right? It's yeah, exactly. We're not used to. So also, as a disclaimer here, we, we, we will look at something more interesting than boxes and circles. <laughs> and as we look at some real world examples here, <laughs> we're starting off with some abstract stuff. Just because that's where you you got to simplify down into. Like mm -hmm. we, we're going back to as, most, as basic as we can possibly go, which is basic shapes. Yeah. So we'll talk about a few different kinds of contrast here, such as shape, color, value, uh, time. Type. Time, texture, texture as well, size. And, um, and if you stick to the end, we'll also show you some zebra stuff. Oh, we'll have a practical example. Yeah, we actually yeah. have a real practical <laughs> one, uh, which, is, which is what we use for our film work as well. Like, yeah. We use this directly in the work. But I think understanding, like if you understand, okay, you look at this image and if you, like, if you truly understand <laughs> this image, then you're good. Like then, yeah. then, you know, then you can really take what, what contrast is really about and apply it to yeah. if you're drawing, if you're sculpting, if, if you're doing photography, whatever it is, yeah. then, you know, you're, it's, ugh, it's just such an important thing. And like Henning said, I think it is something that's often overlooked. Yeah. So with that said, let's actually talk about this weird image here. <laughs> so this here is to talk about, about shapes here. Like it's not about necessarily if you use round shapes or harsh shapes in mm -hmm. here. It's it's about the differences in them here. Here, where do you look? You you know you have you have a picture with a bunch of circles, and then you have one square shape, one shape with actual corners. Yeah, and you're just gonna automatically be drawn to the difference in them. Yeah. And, and you could flip this around as well. You could have something which is super round or super super harsh with one round shape here, and you would look there as well. So you can use this directly in a composition. Let's say you have a you have a like a Mordor environment, really harsh volcanic shapes and all these kind of stuff here. But if you were to have one simple round shape in it, that's yeah. where you would draw your eye to. I mean, if you if, if using that example, you think of of Frodo and. Um was the non Sam. Sam. The non important <laughs> one. Um, right? Like they're they're two soft, uh, colorful hobbits from mm. Hobbiton in that sequence where they're oh spoilers. Uh, <laughs> they're they're climbing that mountain next to the Nas schools where they live or whatever. Mm. It's like it's I think that's a really nice example because you have this like dark, sinister black mountain mm. and then these two soft, adorable hobbits in their brown and green clothing. Like, they just stand out immediately. Yeah. And you have the opposite as well, which is actually in... We're talking about Lord of Rings now, because they're awesome movies. <laughs> in, in, in the beginning of Fellowship of the Ring, you're talking about, you have the Shire. And the Shire is actually fairly similar to this here in an abstract sense. Like, you have a bunch of circles, all the hobbits are round and fat and super jolly and all that. Everything is round. Then you have then you have a, a dark rider which comes in. There you have one in school which comes in, and he's just he's a square. He yeah. just looks like the odd thing out here, and he's uncomfortable. And, and, and he's he's even more uncomfortable. He feels more uncomfortable because he doesn't fit in there, mm. and he's even more scary. But if you had an environment where where he fits in, you know, he he just fits in. He's just put yeah, his yeah. Nazgul buddies here. <laughs> So it's, it's the same with uh, Gandalf. Like when Gandalf mm. rocks around in Hobbiton, you know, he's like wearing that, I think it's like gray costume, yeah. which is not colorful. No. Size-wise, you know, there's a big contrast in size. Mm. So he stands out. Yeah. It, that's, that's really the, the essence of it. 
So contrast can be used in so many ways. And that's what we're going back to basic here. We're going back to abstract. Because if you understand this, like what we're saying here, if you understand this picture here, this is the Nazgul in Hobbiton. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to just show you a bunch of pictures, but we will. We will. Um, that like clearly illustrates, okay, here's color contrast, here's yeah. shape contrast. Like I think the abstract ones, however silly and stupid they might seem, <laughs> are really, really powerful examples. This here took me six months to understand. I remember when we had classes, the design classes, with our teacher called Lawrence, Matt, shout out to Lawrence, mm. fantastic teacher. It, it, in the beginning, it was like, this seems very art school bullshitty. Yeah. And that's something when I've been teaching this as well. I have to preface this by saying that it looks like absolute art school bullshit, where it's about your feelings and shapes <laughs> and texture. And, you know, it's all about that. But you can use this in a real practical sense. Yeah. Like we're not, I think if, if people that have watched this channel for a while, I think they, they sort of, they know that we're not about a pure abstract concept. Your concept, feelies. If your feelies <laughs> that you can talk about and make you sound sophisticated, no. it's all about practical things that you can use like yeah. in your everyday thing. Yeah. So, so we now we talked about this for a while. Now. Let's look at some more stuff. Hey, 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 another one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is value contrast. So value is one of the most important things you can possibly use. Like I'm, I've been working a lot as a text artist, and that's the first thing I'm doing. Whenever I'm doing anything, I'm not just looking at, I'm not just putting down some color or all that. Mm. I'm doing values. Where do you look in this picture? You look at the, you look at the dot, which is. Brighter. Different, well, yeah. yeah, it was different, and it's not because it's bright here. It's because it's different. You can yeah. flip it around, and uh, it would just you would just immediately look at a dark dot. It's uh, yeah, exactly. one one of the really one of the ways I learned this was have a blank piece of paper and draw a single dot on it. There is <laughs> nothing there, but suddenly you introduce some contrast into this image now. Yeah, and uh, now you know where to look, and uh, you're directing people's eyes. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a way to like. Not, I wasn't gonna like cheat the viewer, <laughs> but it's a way for you to control yeah. the viewer. Like if you're doing a painting and you want them to look in a specific place, figure out what makes that specific place or spot different from the yeah. rest of it. Whether it's like, I don't know, like a Renaissance fair painting or mm. something and you have a bunch of stalls and people are selling fruit and spices or whatever and it's like super crummy, but maybe you have this one super colorful stall that just sells one thing and like it's armor outside or something. Something that makes something unique, mm. that's where you will look. This is what they were doing, speaking of Renaissance painting, this is what we're doing with all the religious art. It's like, why do you need to look at Jesus? What do you do? You put a <laughs> glowing circle around his head. You put a halo there. It's like, I'm sure there has some religious tones as well, but it's just an, it's just an important like point to make from a compositional point of view. Yeah. You want to make, you want to look at something, put a circle around it. It's what you have with all the YouTubers as well, which is like they have an open mouth and they're pointing at something and there's a red circle there. We don't do that. <laughs> do you think they looked at old school Renaissance paintings and were like, man, that's genius. <laughs> but it's it's like, it's tasteless in that sense. Jesus, the Jesus painting is awesome. But in, in the YouTube comments, it's it's tasteless, but it's it's efficient. It is super efficient. Like, yeah, put a circle around something. You see that with, uh, I think it's, it was, um, what's the magician illusionist? Dude, the British guy. Um, the something I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Some dude, really cool. And uh, he did Darren this, Brown. Darren Brown. That's exactly, the one. Exactly. Exactly. He does that. He he he's done that a few times. I think uh, one I remember was like a circle he drew on the ground and he put a like a like a wallet or oh, something inside. That, yeah. And it's like it, it's something that stands out so much in a urban environment, yeah. right? You have this bright I don't know yellow circle and then you have a wallet on the inside. It's just something that grabs your attention. And nobody touched it. And nobody touches it, yeah. <laughs> I think this is a good example as well of with the, the picture we're looking at now. It is like you have a dark room and then you, you enable a single flashlight or a single candle or mm. whatever it is. You instantly know what to look for. Yeah. So super efficient way of getting focus here. Yeah. Like it, it really more was saying is really about getting focus here and to make something interesting as well. Like this I'm not going to say this picture is interesting, but at least you you know where to look. Yeah. I spent like at least 30 seconds on that. Yeah, Morton is very good at making <laughs> circles. <laughs> so that's value contrast. Uh, you can use this for a bunch of stuff. Like we can look at this a bit later as so with textures. Mm. If you you know if you want to make something um, if you want to make like a like a face more more interesting, just put something dark around the eyes. Yeah. Same thing as here, or bright around the eyes if it's a darker character. 
And this is really to like drive home that concept that, so whether it's colors, values, whatever it is, um, we actually have two example here. So one is majority red and the majority is blue mm -hmm. in the other one. But it's just to make you understand. Like here, I feel like with color, especially vivid colors, mm. it's a lot easier to understand. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I see there's a bunch of red stuff there, but you know, the blue one, is that's definitely the one that stands out. Yeah. So that's what you, where you look. And that's not because that one is blue or the other ones are red. No. Again, it's because that's when that one is different. Yeah, I feel the reason we're putting this in here is that a lot of times your you red is like a really, it's a really like prominent color. Like it's, if, if there's red in a picture, you're just going to look there. But in this case, we flipped it. Yeah. You know, everything is red and you're looking at the blue stuff. Yeah. And red is the dramatic stuff, but you're not looking there. Oh, we're going to have so many comments being like, no, I didn't look at the blue stuff. I <laughs> yeah. totally looked at the red. Or like, I looked at the background. Yeah, and also <laughs> Blender is way better than the photo. <laughs> oh, man. For no reason at all. So it starts. And the next one, we flipped it. Where do you look now? You look at the red stuff. Like, the point here is, it's not about which color you're using. It's about the contrast between them. Mm -hmm. This was a huge learning experience for me when I learned that. It's not about which color you use when you're painting or you're doing lighting or whatnot. It's what what surrounds them. Yeah. You can you can use whatever color you want as long as as long as you know, you control your contrast. I think when we had color theory, we were told that uh, one of the old painters he said, "I can paint, I can paint uh, the color, I can paint be most beautiful skin with mud as long as you let me control the colors around them." Yeah. And like you know, that might be a bit exaggerated here, but it, the point is. If you control the colors, I mean, just again, look through this. This also hurts your eyes, so I'm not going to do this too much. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you should have like an epilepsy warning. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you know, exact same thing here. But you would just control it now with yeah. color. So color, super important for contrast. Now this one is interesting. It's a, it's a bit of like two things, I guess, combined. Mm. Like one is the is one is repetition. So these yes. ones, like the circles, weren't perfectly spaced out. But these these boxes here are perfectly spaced mm -hmm. out. We and measured, <laughs> <laughs> or at least Photoshop did. <laughs> this is something I don't want to go too much into this, but this is something we tend to do as 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 humans mm. uh, for some reason. Like we really like systems, and we really like things to just be rep. Repetitive. We love patterns. We love patterns. So it's um, what, what was it we talked about? The fence post. Uh, oh yeah, the, yeah. It's like, so it looks like looks like a fence here. Yeah, exactly. It's like the, we call it the fence post syndrome or something. Yeah. Like you often see that in paintings. Actually, um, let's uh, do an imaginary one of like the Scottish Highlands with sheep mm. or whatever, and then you have a fence going out in the distance. It's a very easy mistake to make to just make all of the spacing between mm. all the fence posts exactly the same, which makes it look. I mean, obviously, we do that in cities and around the world where we like in urban environments and, and with our houses, everything is perfect. Mm. But in nature, that, that never occurs. No. Like two trees are never going to be the same sp space apart as the next two trees. No. There's always going to be variation there. And the same goes with size. Like yeah. that, that's what this really illustrates. And if they are spaced perfectly, which like one said, they aren't in nature, but if they are, that's because humans planted them. Yeah. And they're going to look, they're going to look unnatural. We were just in a park in this weekend and we just saw some trees like that, which were perfectly spaced out. And it's like, it looks, it looks man-made. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, really important to break this up here. So I mean, this is, yeah, the difference here is really like, uh, is really just the po important point here is just break it up. Yeah. Break it up and you instantly have focus. Yeah. And we're talking about size as well. Size is one of the really important pieces when it comes to contrast here. Which is big, which is small. <laughs> well, it's all relative. Could we make the small one here feel big? Mm. Sure. Put a smaller one next to it. Yeah. Could we feel the big one here feel small? Yeah. Put a giant one next to it. Like yeah. put something which like obscures the entire screen like all <laughs> around here. And this is one that's gonna be feel tiny. It's like when you look at like um you see like a size chart of the solar system, you're looking at Earth. Uh, compared to the moon, and the moon is like a lot smaller. It's almost the same ratio; it's a bit bigger. But um, then you're looking compared to like um, like Uranus and uh, and Jupiter, and it's like Gi Jesus Christ! It's so Earth is so tiny yeah. compared you uh, compared Jupiter to the Sun, and it's so tiny compared the Sun to the next star, and it's so <laughs> tiny compared that star to the next one, and you're just realizing yeah. that size is all relative. Yeah, exactly. So. That's that's a really important thing as well. Uh, we, we recently worked on a movie where we worked on big monsters, <laughs> where one of the big challenges was, how do you make something which is supposed to be 200 meters 
feel big. Yeah, yeah. And that is really tricky. And one of the reasons was put a lot of small detail onto it. Like, give it, of course, big frequency or like low frequency stuff, like big scales and all that. But then you just gotta, you just gotta put a lot of smaller stuff onto it. So it really just reads as, as big. Yeah. And that is still a hard thing. How do you make something big feel big? Because <laughs> you really need something to compare it to. Like if you just have a big monster by itself, mm. then it's not a big monster. No. Then it's just a monster. Yeah. As soon as you put that monster next to a person, yeah. now it's a big monster or it's a small person. Mm. I don't yeah, know. it's a tiny person. <laughs> but th- like the, the point here is really, again, it's contrast. It's not just contrast in terms of like you can see these are the same. These are black, both of them on a white piece of paper. Mm-hmm. So it has nothing to do with with contrast in terms of, oh, you're looking at it because it's a black thing on a white piece of paper. No, you're looking at one of them, whatever one you choose to draw focus to mm. because of the contrast in size. Particularly, I think that's, that's an interesting point. But like here, one of, this, one of these isn't big. It's just only big because it has a relationship. Yeah. If we were to hide one of this, these... It wouldn't be big anymore, or it yeah. wouldn't be small anymore. It would just be a circle. Yeah, and I can't, I can't tell you, I can't look at this. And this is this picture. Uh, it took maybe two seconds to make. So this isn't a picture mm. that's meant to. Okay, you look at the big one, or you look at the small one. No, no, no this is just purely contrast in mm. size. Like if you put a bunch of small dots around them, okay, then you'd look at the big one because that's the one that stands out. If you put mm. a bunch of big dots around the small one, now we're back to the whole like difference in shape. Yeah. Um, so it's it's all these elements really play together, and yeah. you have to understand them. I have to understand them all in in order to like really make it work for your images. Yeah, for sure. Then let's look at some real examples here. So this here is very very similar to the other one we had in terms of like like contrast. I mean, this is this is actually just a circle <laughs> surrounded by <Yeah>. blue, <laughs> and it's it's like almost red. It's like orangey. So where do you look? Sure, there's a bunch of stuff on top of it. You have like the little drops and all that, but this is essentially just a bunch of blue with some color on it. Yeah. So such an important way of controlling contrast here. Yeah. It's also completely coincidental that these two are the same. That is, <laughs> <laughs> we want to say that this is this is all of the sign that was completely by accident. But you, I mean, you can go further and and break this image down, right? Like if it's it was just the blue with the orange, okay, and then it was just pure color contrast, mm. but. Within the little orange kind of thing that looks like a sun, right? You have mm-hmm. a you have breakup because of the the water that's on top mm-hmm. as well. So you get some you get some contrast within the shape as well that makes yeah. it interesting. So it like it makes it stand out even more because yeah. it's not just a solid chunk of of color. Exactly. Like you have the round shape of it of the mm-hmm. sun, and then you have the, uh, the the jagged shapes of that, and then you also have the size difference as well. You have size contrast here. Uh, the, the the big draw or the big sun is a lot bigger than all the other ones. Yeah. And you can also see that in general, the droplets around it, they're all mostly different sizes. You have some really big ones and you have some really small ones. If they were all the same size, this would look be a really weird image. Yeah. And it doesn't matter if they're all big or all big or all small. What's important is the contrast between them. I think it's really interesting once you start to break it down, you can see like, okay, you have this, that, that level of detail. You have this level of detail. Okay, then you have these drops mm-hmm. here. But then you have tiny, tiny, minuscule drops surrounding yeah. it as well. But then if you look here, there's nothing. Mm. Like there's like a line of nothing going yeah. right down here. The same in here. So you have spots of like rest for your mm. eyes. So you could argue that these would also be focal points. Obviously, this one stands out a lot more because this one sort of incorporates multiple elements that we yeah. talked about. This w- this here would just be uh, a difference in like actual objects. Yeah. Like, so with the with the shapes, there's variation in shape. But here we have shape, we have color, we have value, we have texture. Mm. So there's a bunch of things that draw your eye there. Yeah, it really is. And this isn't necessarily something like when you take a picture here, you're just like, you're placing all these things no, here. No. Like this is just, a lot of this just kind of comes there naturally. It's just trying to figure out why this why this works. Yeah, like the person who took this picture didn't think, okay, I can see all the tiny, tiny droplets <laughs> there and there's some no, detail no, missing no, no, no. there. But, you know, it's enough for you to go, okay, there's contrast in color. Yeah. Cool thing to take a picture of. Yeah. You don't want to over overanalyze no. because then, then also you're starting to be like, you know, when you're in high school and you have to analyze a poem oh, and you're and you're like, the guy was like, I just want this to be a happy poem. And you're <laughs> analyzing it to death. <laughs> Same thing here as well. The main thing here is color contrast. Mm-hmm. You put so you have something blue and you put something warm on top of it. Boom. You know where to look. Yeah. Same thing here as well. This is very similar. Uh, you know, it's just it's a picture where you, you have a lot of blue and then you have some red. I 
I can't help to look at the sunset here. Mm. This is where I'm instantly drawn to. And then, like Morton was saying before, like you have primary areas, and then you have like secondary and tertiary areas as well. So it's not that you're only looking here. Like um, in the in the abstract examples, you were only looking at one spot. Yeah, like yeah. There was nothing interesting. But here you're looking at tons of different things. There's there are a bunch of different areas in in the city here where you have warm light and you have cold light all together. But the primary thing here for me is definitely the sunset here. It's interesting because um, I I see it a little differently here. Oh, okay. The primary one for me is actually the river. Ah. Um, like to me that yeah, because like it's interesting because I, I guess that varies a lot from person yeah. to person. Also, the whoever takes the picture. Yeah. Like for me, the river stands out because of the lack of detail. Oh, the, contra- the texture. Yeah, exactly. Because mm. there's so much detail and texture in the city around it, and yeah. then there's nothing in the river. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this, yeah, so this one has a lot of those elements that could, that could, you know, different people could see it in different ways, which I think is really interesting. And this is also where you can, if you were to break this down into an abstract sense, you would have a smooth thing in the middle. If mm-hmm. you only look in contrast now, like, you oh, sorry, texture now, you were to, you were to desaturate this. You would only have, uh, you would have tons of details on the side, but you have a very clean river in the middle. Yeah. You can totally use that for everything you're doing in CG. If you're doing texturing, you can have you can have a very busy very busy arms on a character and a very clean torso for more or, or the opposite. Mm-hmm. We're going to show something similar later on, like how you can how you can essentially do this with a character. Yeah. We have pores everywhere, and we can just simplify that down. They went this as well. This is a lovely lovely mm. uh, uh, bit of concept art by a guy called Peter Koenig. Uh, probably mispronouncing that. So good. So good. Uh, it's just a really cool. Obviously, there's a lot of different kinds of contrast here as well. You have, you have some shape contrast, you have some round stuff, and you have some softer areas. But what I really like here is the color contrast. Like, it's a very monochromatic creature, and then you just have crazy red stuff just on the on the back spikes. And my eyes are just instantly drawn. Yeah, to that. Yeah, the same. My eyes are instantly drawn to the red stuff. It's such a it's such a brave choice, really. Like doing that, I'm always like, oh no, we need to blend <laughs> it together. And he's like, no, <laughs> just make it harsh and get it in there. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. I really like this. I mean, this is this is how I'm trying to texture as well. Like add some bright areas. Just it, this could be it could be it could be bright in in terms of color intensity could be just like crazy red or it could be brighter in terms of value yeah like the spikes are very dark so if you were to make them brighter at the tips that would also just read better yeah you also have the contrast on like you know his hands and Mm. and feet just that very dark it's like almost like charcoal black yeah um next to the lighter body but for sure the spikes are are you you're you're definitely drawn to that same as well black and white picture practically bunch of color in the middle yeah yeah Nice little bird. <laughs> Again, <laughs> black and white picture. But in here you also have contrast in within the colors as well. Like the majority here is uh, is blue for the wings, and then there are some reds here as well. It just it just makes it really interesting to look at in terms of that. Nature is fantastic when it comes to color contrast. Yeah. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm when I'm texturing is or designing creatures like this when it comes to color is um, like 70 30 split like yeah, maybe maybe 70 percent is one color and 30 percent is another color so in this case 70 percent blue and then like 30 percent uh, red or maybe in this case 70 uh, percent blue 20 percent red and like 10 10 percent green or something like yeah, that yeah. just to like break it up so if if this was equal if if the wings were like red up till here, this would probably be a, a more dull image. Mm-hmm. But right now, because there is so much contrast. It's really cool contrast on the tail as well. Mm. Like you have that tiny area of, of red that's surrounded by blue. Mm. That's, that's a really cool way of, of framing it as well. Nature is so good when it comes to when it comes to design, really. Yeah, I mean, you you, you got to be from from a, like an evolutionary point of view. You have the same thing in people mm. nowadays, but that's more of a social thing, not so much uh, from nature. Like people that dress silly mm. or uh, like <laughs> cold fashion. <laughs> oh right, no, but like because I'm th- I'm thinking of the. Um, uh, I don't know if this is a real thing, but it's like a, the, the peacock syndrome or something. <laughs> I have no called. idea what that is. Okay, so let me break it down. So, okay, let's say you have uh, hot chicks and hot dudes, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you always have, like, people on the street that stand out in a way, whether it's like a really big muscular guy mm-hmm. with no clothes on because he wants to stand out, mm-hmm. or if it's like some hot chick with no clothes on, um, mm. Or really colorful clothes. You see that a lot as well. Mm. Um, people that want to draw attention to themselves. Mm. Wh- whatever reason they do it for, it doesn't really matter. But 
have some some people that are just dressed in like okay maybe they actually put feathers on their head or whatever <laughs> it is like if you have if you look at a uh, people in the city right it's primarily going to be uh, d- uh depending on what country you're in right now we're in the uk so and in london a bunch of people in suits mm. and then the majority of people in darker clothes desaturated clothes then you have the people who are really colorful mm. and this is not just the hot dudes and the hot chicks that are like trying to whatever this is also just uh, people who like to dress up in really colorful ways mm. those are the people that stand out mm. because you know it's the peacock thing like they 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 spread their wings and yeah. display color and mm. nature does that all the time yeah because they have to be able to attract a mate yeah or uh, or tell somebody mm. that uh, i am super poisonous. Yeah. You eat me and you will die and your entire family will die. It's like, we'll both die, but mostly you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> eat me at your own peril. Yeah. Then we have um, then we have to talk about shapes as well. No, Shape. this is just a boat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we're just going to talk about boats now for the next half hour. That's it. <laughs> yeah, my favorite boat. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is, obviously this looks like the most evil boat in existence. Yeah, it's a pretty evil boat. <laughs> so... You can, if you want to, it, it feels a bit like almost like it doesn't fit in here because you have this mm. really like soft environment in general, like no dramatic clouds or anything like that. So this just sticks out right away. So if you want to make something feel super evil, put a black triangle <laughs> in like a nice blue environment. Yeah, but like, that's, that's the interesting part. Like it stands out for a, a for multiple reasons. First of all, it's black. Mm. Uh, it's very rare that you find just black stuff in nature like yeah. that maybe it's charcoal or it's burnt wood or whatever mm. um but also shape wise yeah. you know, you're, you're not gonna find this shape in nature <laughs> no. so let's put that in nature and uh, you win yeah exactly yeah you just can look at it right away it looks like um like kylo ren's spaceship as well <laughs> it just it reads right away do you think that's his boat <laughs> kylo ren's boat this could very well be kylo ren's boat <laughs> <laughs> same thing here as well very soft face and then just crazy stuff going on with uh, like the the crack in between yeah clear contrast here when it comes to the shape it's a, it's a really cool image actually mm, it a... is pretty sure this was not delivered just like an old renaissance culture where somebody cra- smashed up imagine you do that you spend like ha- six months doing this really nice mm. sculpt and then at the end of it you just go crack <laughs> right <Yeah>. in the <laughs> middle damn that'll be bad same thing as well shape mm. which is the bad one <laughs> But also interesting here, like if you look at Maleficent, look at the red lips. Mm. Like instantly my eyes were just drawn there yeah. because of the red lips. That's yeah. so much contrast you can have here. Yeah. So this is also, this is also, I want to do a tutorial on this as well, but as well. Silhouette for character yeah, design, because yeah. that is one of the most important things when it comes to it. Like this, this both shows excellent use of silhouette. You can clearly tell who these are. There are no details whatsoever here. It's only shape. You see a little Mickey Mouse here, super round shapes, you know, <laughs> like there is nothing like there is nothing nasty about him at all. He's pure round shapes. Yeah. Maleficent has triangles on her head. <laughs> she has horns there. Like they're yeah. really nasty shapes. Her her coat is is like all sh- nasty shapes. Her lips are spiky. Uh, the stuff on her neck is spiky. Like everything yeah. about her is spiky. The V neck is spiky. Mickey Mouse has nothing of that. Like that's back to the example of uh, the Hobbits, right? Like mm. if you put Let's say you have a town full of innocent mice, like mm. Mickey Mouse and whatever, who else is in that universe, and then you put Maleficent in there, you're instantly <laughs> going to look at Maleficent because she's the one who stands out. Yeah, or the opposite, put Mickey Mouse in, in her world. Mm-hmm. She's, he's just going to stand out like crazy. A.K.A. Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing as well. Um, we have talking about size here now. How do you make something feel small? Or Boom. big. Or big. <laughs> you put a giant thing next to it or a yeah. small thing next to it. Like the thing on the monster here, who knows how big that is? If you take away the boat, like that could be like an anglerfish, which is like the size of a fist or something. Yeah. Like it's crazy, crazy small. But now you have a Viking boat and boom. Yeah. This is now like a few hundred meters large. You put something next to it that you know the size of. It mm. could be a car. I mean, it'd be silly to have a car in the ocean, but, <laughs> you know, something that's recognizable yeah. and that, that gives you instant contrast. Mm, for sure. Uh, you also have contrast here in values as well. Like, you have a clear, like, a sunset or, like, a sunrise just next to the boat just to bring focus to that. Yeah. It's just a really useful tool. If that wasn't there, sure, we'd still look at it, but it's but it, it's just a really useful tool. 
beautiful mm. picture here. I really like this one. Um, how how big is this? Take away the people. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's a few meters. Like, is it a is it a well? Is it a regular human sized well? You have the people here now. Clearly, you know how big this is. You can yeah. accurately measure how big this is. That was um, I think it was for the Elder Scrolls Online. Yeah, when the Elder Scrolls Online was coming out. A blur did a bunch of really fantastic cinematics for it, mm. and in that one, it reminds me a lot about this. You, you, I feel like you should go back and, and check that out. The the trailers for that did so good at using size. Mm. They had these huge towers that they needed to you know go up and fight people or whatever on. Um, but from the ground, you really get, and also from above, you really get a, a really nice sense of scale. Yeah. I mean, sure, you have a lot of detail within these columns as well, where you, like, nicely carve details. But because of the size difference of the people and the mountains and and the columns, you really start to understand that. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't really understand this without the people. No. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jeez. Look at this. Look at this unit. (laughs) It's absolutely crazy horse. (laughs) That is, it's just, Henning showed this to me before we started the video, and this is just insane. (laughs) Like look, look at the neck. You can, it's huge. Yeah, yeah. Morton is in awe of this guy. Yeah, I don't even know what to say. Just make a big horse or something. But if you, if uh, <laughs> but imagine if this, uh, if the guys next to him was or was twice his size. Yeah. Then it would it would still look like a pretty thick horse, but it would look like a thick horse which was small, like a yeah, like a miniature thick horse. A miniature thick horse, yeah. <laughs> Just goes to the gym a lot. Yeah. But it's interesting, like Neck you, day every day. you also have the contrast of like if, if you were to just quickly analyze the image, right? You have the contrast of really dark background, mm-hmm. mostly, uh, really bright horse, and then uh, a, a dark contrast again with the dude in the front because of yeah. his suit. Yeah. And you have some internal contrast in the horse because it's lighter at the top, darker at the bottom, but then again lighter at the hoofs. So it's really nice stuff yeah. in there for, yeah. from a value point of view. This is where like it's interesting to analyze them. Uh, it's also important to note that this is not for the people intended. They were just like, holy shit, look at this big horse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> wow, we just want to take a picture of that horse. <laughs> yeah. But it's still interesting how you can analyze this. Yeah. This is also where it's sometimes useful just to draw and paint or render or whatever in black and white because then you have nothing else. You have you have no color or anything like that. You, yeah, all, yeah. you have pure value. I think this goes back to the observation video we, mm. we did. Uh, shameless plug of our own video, I guess. Free, own free video. Yeah, um, that like once you start to observe these things, that's how you can really use it. Yeah. Like if you just look at this image, we're like, yeah, it's a big horse. Yeah. Like you're not going to learn anything from that. I mean, sure, you know it's a big horse because there's a small dude in front of him. Mm. But <laughs> like, and that it might seem overly simplified if you need to do that for for an image like well i need a big horse i'll just make the horse big (laughs) yeah then it's a big horse you know but it's like why does it feel big yeah that's the important part yeah (laughs) this is awesome yeah it's like like, it's really like the um uh the incredibles mm, yeah it is a big daddy dude whatever his name is Uh, i think that's his name big (laughs) daddy dude (laughs) (laughs) i think you might be thinking of a different movie here (laughs) oh yeah I think it's name is that. Mr. Incredible. Ah, uh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so the cool thing about this is, first you can use you can use size for comedy, like you you put a massive guy next to a not massive guy, and it just it's just funny. Yeah. And also he just looks a lot bigger because you're putting a small guy next to him. Also, also, not even that, small, probably just an average guy. But that dude is a fucking mountain. Like he <laughs> yeah. is huge. <laughs> he's so massive. Jesus, that must be impractical. Yeah, he's lifted all the things. Probably. <laughs> They were also talking about time. Time is awesome when it comes to this kind of stuff. Mm. So this is from Skyfall. This I think it's like every single shot, a single frame from every single shot, and uh, we can see here that it, it's different. Different eras of of the movie have different color schemes and levels of contrast, and you can see where it gets more dramatic in it. And um, how you can contrast like you have a blue 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 scene here, and then you have a very warm scene. Just nice contrast. And then it goes from like very low contrast to which is very very warm and nice, and then it just goes into darkness here. Yeah. It gets really dark and dramatic, and then they just take it full on here, where it's all just really dramatic, yeah. warm lighting, and this is the end sequences here. So it's interesting how you can have contrast in time as well. I also really like at the top there. Um, I think I would imagine this is probably from the intro sequence, mm. maybe. Oh, it could be. 
Yeah, something like that. But it's really interesting with the with the blue sort of timeline going across, and all of a sudden we switch to red. Mm. Like it's just pure red, right? Uh, yeah. So we have contrast there as well. So really, really cool elements with time as well. It's very interesting if you're doing a color script for a movie. I was doing that in yeah. school with it for for the short film we we're working on, and I, w- I was responsible for doing the color script for it. And it's so interesting when you're thinking about contrast over time. Mm. Like you, and you can use you can use all the principles we just talked about now, which is texture, uh, shape. Uh, like the rhythm, all these kind of things, you can talk, you can use that for time as well, just to really make it a nice coherent movie or yeah. game or whatever it is you're doing, which you know has time, mm-hmm. which is not a still image. This is awesome. Yeah, it's a pretty cool image. <laughs> we were just talking about this just before, and like as we started to look at it, we started to realize that it, this was actually a really good image mm. for a bunch of contrast reasons. Yeah. Um, there's the, you know, there's the details on the face. We have like a lot of nice breakup with sharp teeth and everything mm. next to the neck, which has nothing. It's just mm. smooth. So soft. You know, you have a spiky horns next to soft clouds. Mm. There's color variation in terms of contrast, like the orangey clouds versus a blue dragon. Mm. So, so a lot of elements in this one to really draw your attention. Yeah, it's really interesting because the reason I put this up here was just because of value contrast. Yes. Yeah. The, the head is pretty dark and then you have a really bright area behind him there so that was the reason that this is this is the jesus effect we were talking about before yeah, this essentially. is really the jesus effect. instead of putting an actual halo around him, you're putting a blurred halo around him you yeah. wanted to look at you the, the artist here probably wants you to look at the head of the dragon and so he just put a halo around it yeah. you just put a bright things a bright thing behind a dark thing where do you look? Yeah. So, and it's interesting because, like, look, if you look at it, like, you have the wing, right, going around in a circle mm. that's dark next to light stuff. And then again, you have a light thing going around a dark head. So it really, like, you read this shape really, really nicely. And in this case, though, this is where I think it makes sense to actually analyze this because this is a painting. This is not some, some guy who's like, Holy shit, look at that horse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which you, 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 and you'd be like, oh, look at this suit. It's different. This is where, like, every single choice was deliberate. Like, as you know, when you're painting something, you can't just go, oh, I'll let the physically accurate shaders do the work and let's just see what happens. You <laughs> have to be deliberate here. So, if you're looking at a lot of traditional painters or digital painters as well, they just know these principles better than anyone. They understand how to use contrast to their advantage, they know how to. Pu- so in this one, how do you how do you make this image here work? Well, first you need where do you look? You want to look at the head. Put a bright thing behind it. Put, make the head dark. You want to make it feel nice and varied. You put some really soft areas like um, top right, like Morton said, the clouds soft. Mm. And you contrast that with the harsh shapes here. Uh, you you contrast the wings are really thin. The, the, the membrane between, behind them really thin compared to the absolute massive size and scale of the dragon here. So if you if you know these principles here. Then you can really make something spectacular like this, like this painting here. Yeah. And if you don't know them, then you're just kind of winging it. Yeah. And you even have like you also have size differences. It's it's mm. kind of hard to gauge the sort of like the real physical size of this dragon. But we yeah. can see that you know he's tearing up some uh, poor souls yeah. down here. Yeah. And because they're small, he looks big. Yeah. How big? I don't know. He could be the size of the sun. But yeah. <laughs> that's. <laughs> but at least yeah, like Morton said, because you have those size references here, like it's probably a goat based on the horns, mm-hmm. which is down there in the bottom left. Then, if you know, go, goat skull, you know, maybe 30 <laughs> centimeters, 40 <laughs> centimeters, then suddenly you, you have a scale reference here. Yeah. So this guy clearly knows everything about the principles here. Or maybe he just got lucky. Maybe he just got really lucky. <laughs> this is also useful for contrast. Uh, if you, this, uh, this here is um, it's a more dramatic makeup session. Yeah. She looks a bit more evil here. I think it's Miranda Carr, uh, Victoria's Secret model. She, um, you can make her look like the kindest, most beautiful woman ever, or you can make her look a bit evil. Here, <laughs> if, you know, if her skin is uh, it's fairly fairly bright, and then you just make her eyes, eyebrows, and particularly lips and hair super dark. Yeah, it's kind of like the Maleficent thing as well. Yeah. If you want to make this here her feel more more friendly, you make her her lips more lush. You make her. Her, you just make her, her makeup more appealing. Yeah, more bright, I yeah, guess. Yeah, more bright. It's interesting, as, as, as a special note with people, is like we, we, we're we so like programmed genetically to 
find faces. Mm. So we find faces in everything. That's why you have like the Jesus bread and whatever. Face on Mars. As well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so it's 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 such a hard thing to do with faces because you're just programmed to look at eyes. Yeah. Like you're like, oh, face. Yeah, look at eyes. Oh, yeah. eyes. Um, but this is a really interesting way to sort of play with that. Mm, really and you can really f- look at photography, portraiture photography, product yeah. photography. Makeup. Your, more makeup as well. Yeah. Makeup is, is, is essentially like guide your attention. Oh, we still need to do that. Like we, we've been wanting to recruit my girlfriend to do a, <laughs> it's, it's going to sound weird. Like it's a makeup tutorial, yes. but for like for 3D artists. Yeah. Because, um, uh, you know, not to offend anyone out there, but like you guys, including me, uh, and, me. <laughs> and you don't know how to apply makeup. Like no. it's a, uh, like I think we we often run into the issue that we kind of make women look like prostitutes when we give them makeup. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> like 18th century French prostitutes, yeah, something exactly. like straight out of Les Miserables or something like that. <laughs> we just don't know how to do it. Like once, uh, like I've gone through this a lot with my girlfriend in terms of uh, not applying makeup to my face, but <laughs> applying makeup to the 3D models that I do. Mm. Um, she'll often do like a paint over in Photoshop where she'll you know she'll do some contrast to the cheekbones. She'll mm. highlight some things on the nose where I just go what <laughs> why um but it, it really good. it really creates contrast within the face mm. yeah we should uh, we should get on that we should definitely do that <laughs> this is well um super cool stuff just add some contrast to the face instead yeah. of this being all bright or all dark just making the area around the eyes a bit darker uh, you can also do this with war paint as well just really make it a bit more unnatural yeah. and a bit more interesting like that also yes. a bunch of size differences here as well. We look at the spots. There are small, medium, and large spots yeah, yeah. as well. Yeah, nice. Like you have some variation with the blue. Mm. The contrast the sort of orangey skin and the black. Yeah. That's really cool. It's really nice looking at this where you have like the yeah, like the blue which blends the two. I often do it as well when I'm texturing. Just like it's not just it's not just uh, like a bright orange or like peach and, and like dark blue. You're adding like an in-between color which is mm. nice and nice and saturated. Yeah. This is also awesome. That's super cool. This is such a cool <laughs> picture where you have the, you just have the the contrast in the hair and in the top of the forehead. It, it this would be a great character design. And um, even if this, I assume this is a real picture. This is such a cool. Yeah. This is such a cool guy. Yeah. I really cool. like this. <laughs> but again, contrast. Mm, it's... For sure. So that's all the images we have to look at now. We promised you a practical demo as well, and we have been going for quite some time now. Oh yeah, oh geez. <laughs> so uh, here we are in ZBrush, and this is the guy I've been working on. And what I did for this, I plastered him with alphas everywhere. The problem is, this is too much. There is no contrast in this. It's just, they have the same, the same thickness, the same size. Um, and, and they are everywhere. Yeah, most importantly, they are everywhere. <laughs> so w- one of the big things I've learned over the years is, particularly with details, that it's really like the less is more, that by having by having details in specific spots, this can really make a difference here. So we can just start painting them out here. So technically, the way we're doing this, it's not a super tutorial, it's just a morph target. Morph target has been stored, and we're just painting here a new layer. So I, I just want to make sure that this here is... Uh, it's just a bit softer. So certain er- areas I don't want crazy pores in will be like around here. General areas where there is a lot of um, where there's curvature. So for instance, with this here, there's curvature going up here. I just want to kill a bit of the stuff here. Take the intensity down. It's a bit too, just a bit too strong. And we can just start killing it here, and it's just going to start reading a lot better. I don't want a lot of pores where this, the skin is stretching here, also because the pores would look very different. Yeah. Um, if you have if you have like um, skin detail like this, I wanna I wanna remove some of the pores going over them, just so that the pores which are there will just read a lot better. The issue with like let's specifically take pores an exam- as an example here. Pores are just noise, right? Mm. Like it's like if you take a Photoshop an image into Photoshop and you apply an apply a noise filter to it, the noise is gonna wash away a lot of the details. Yeah. So if you just plaster something with an alpha that's like a noisy alpha like this, you often run into the issue that you're actually erasing a lot of your detail, a lot yes. of your sculptural detail. And that's something you can highlight by surrounding it with with noisy details like pores and, and putting your pores or your details in a specific spot. Yeah, for sure. Like you, you probably want more, more of the details around the nose here and maybe around the mouth. You, you really just don't, you don't, you really don't want this everywhere as well. No. 
And this is also where you can use you can use contrast. Like let's say everything here was textured, like crazy pores apart from the eyes. You would look there. Or what if nothing is textured, but the eyes are crazy wrinkled. Mm -hmm. So I'm using this as a deliberate tool. Like up here, there is a lot of contrast right here. Like there is a lot of wrinkles up here and a lot of pores. I don't want people to look there. So I'm just gonna take this out a little. Just remove them a little bit. Yeah, that's interesting because like there you have like you have a scar on the top of the forehead there mm. uh, that is surrounded by a smooth area. So instantly that becomes an area of, of, of interest all of a sudden. Mm. So let's just tone this down a little bit. Just go a bit, not go so crazy. It's all about it's all about subtlety with these kind of things here. So let's compare this before and after now. So it's it's subtle, but it's enough just to make something read just a bit better. Like it just, it just feels a bit more natural mm -hmm. right away. So this is what this is what I've been doing for years. Now when it comes to movies, you plaster everything with details, yeah, and then you go in and you just soften it up here, just to have less contrast here. So, super quick practical demo here. I just really <laughs> want to cover this that you can you can actually use this here. And you only had to wait forty minutes to get a practical <laughs> demo. So yeah. that's that's nice. And you got three minutes of ZBrush. So. <laughs> Yeah, like this this thing here has really improved my sculpture. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these things here has really improved it. Um, all all the c different color or contrast stuff we've been talking about now, which is value, color, shape, yeah. repetition, texture. If you combine all these things here together, you just control your image so much more. You control your model, you control your textures, uh, your composition, all these kind of things here. If you're lighting something, you want to just think about where you place your lights. Yeah. You don't want to place the lights everywhere. You want to have a clear focus on where you're lighting something. So we really hope this art fundamental video has been useful. And mm. let us know if you want to see what will, we're going to do more art fundamental videos. If you want to see more, more of those, let us know. And what kind of videos you want to see as well. Or if there is anything which is particularly useful in this video as well, let us, let us know. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching and uh, make sure to like, comment and subscribe. Thanks guys.